So that's not seem quite too bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In good batch. It really is more difficult when you try to swallow. Mm. Because the, it's like your bitter receptors are in the back part of your tongue and you really get it when you try and swallow it. Mm. I'm going actually for a start, a distance of feeling like a general sense of strangeness about certain things around here, I have to say. Mm. <laughs> I notice um, with my eyes closed, I'm not really seeing much, but I have a distinct feeling like I'm in a stream. It's like the stream's moving from left to right, and it's almost to me, I feel like I'm seeing kind of a purplish blue stream flowing through, kind of right through where I don't may perceive my body else. It's not as intense as when I smoked it earlier in terms of the effect. Actually, it's just kind of easier and mm. more fluid and feely. And, um, I'm much less, mm, I'm much more sort of disembodied and general floaty than I was. Mm-hmm. There's a definite feeling of separation between, I've, I feel that my mind has somehow <coughs> come out of my body. I'm actually watching my body moving its arms and legs mm. and hands and things. Hmm, interesting. Sean then returned to the tree which he had described earlier. Hang on. Yeah, I can... I can do you perceive the tree and... The, do you have the same relationship to the tree as you normally do? Not at all, no. Before I felt it was a very kind of... Um, kind of organic looking thing and it was a very... It was, it was daylight and it was a very... Mm. Um, very sort of tactile tree and it was very it was warm and woody and mm-hmm. it was full of um you can just about see that, it used, that there are bits that you'd call green during the day mm-hmm. but in between those there were lovely autumn sort of flecks of brown and things like that now it looks to me like it, it's more of a kind of carved from stone sort of thing do you mm-hmm. know what i mean with the sort of these bits standing out the, the white bits standing out and then just huge streaks of black shadow The effects of the plant lasted late into the night, but they seemed subtler and harder to gauge than they had been earlier in the day. Daniel and Sean remained seated around the fire until the early hours, and when morning came, they would have a lot to say about what had happened. You can can maybe begin to hallucinate that things have a very sort of... things stand out if if there's light on them. Mm -hmm. A bit like the floor panelling earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, know, the way you can. In the corridor. Oh, yeah. no, it's not a dream. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? The next day, I gathered the team together over breakfast to get some initial impressions. You know, it really just sort of clears out, and I feel refreshed, and like I starting. It's like getting a very good night's sleep. You know, it's like mm, you wake up refreshed. You feel clear there? Yeah, yeah. Right. I feel. I feel Yes, I do. I slept very soundly and very very peacefully, actually. Later, we met in the library to watch a recording of some of the events of the previous day. Okay. Do you think you'll be able to stand up? (laughs) Right, I think that that's a very funny question. Okay. I might be able to, but I don't think so. Okay. What was the meaning of Sean's laughter? John began our discussion with a straightforward explanation. I mean, the giggling's interesting because that suggests to me a removal of inhibition. I mean, normally you don't giggle most of the time. Usually when you're relaxed and enjoying something disinhibited, you start giggling. It wasn't giggling in the same way that if you're being um, physically tickled, which is... It was pleasurable giggling. It was actually yeah. giggling yeah. that yeah. felt very, Enjoy. very, very 
yeah, it felt very nice indeed, and it felt very positive, and it felt very... Um, That's almost the same as a small amount of alcohol. The moment um, that you say it's, it's similar to a small quantity of alcohol is the moment at which that becomes um, an absurd thing to say. I, I'd like to say that um, I think that there's different qualities of laughter, and when I have this kind of deep laughter experience with Salvia, it feels like it's coming from a very, very deep place, like from my core of myself, and I never have that with alcohol. Sometimes I might find things a lot more amusing and be, laugh more freely. Okay. Tim and Francoise were inclined to agree, and saw in the laughter a deeper, uh. more complex response. <laughs> What's interesting here is both of these two seem to know exactly what each other are talking about with regard to, say, this laughter. Laughter which is not specifically about something that they found funny, but a welling up from inside that, that this laughter is a very different sort of laughter. It may not be universal, but it's very common on people who take salvia. But, yes, is that, but you're, so you're suggesting this yeah. is totally unique to no. this drug? No, I think, I, I think it's quite likely that there are other drugs which may have a comparable effect, but it seems to be one regular effect that salvia has. And the euphoria that salvia creates is perhaps distinctive. It's, it's, it's perhaps what we are trying to, to get at in this conversation. There is a specificity to the euphoria that salvia produces. Okay, if you can hold your arms out in front of you, Okay, and close your eyes. Apart from John, the rest of the team thought the type of laughter we had seen was specific to Salvia. But why was it there? And what did it mean? And did it even, perhaps, hold the clue to the meaning of the experience? The difference between champagne giggling and uh, Sean's sort of giggling is, is that it was, there seemed to be some mental activity involved there, that it was his perception that caused the giggling and not an emotional uninhibition. Wouldn't it be true to say that any question you were asked op opened the a paradox to you and, mm -hmm. and you perceived the fun from that because you could, you could that, see it one way or another. There was, it was like seeing a gap in the question. That's and what I was possibly talking about earlier when I said that there was a massive yes. disparity between the fact that I was, I was seeing, as it were, seeing the... Seeing the sort of puerile way I was behaving, on the one hand, and at the very, you know, just giggling and being, acting the goat, and at the very same time, I was, sort of, um, off thinking. Right now, that's yeah, that's really interesting. As I say, drawing comparisons with sort of painting and art and the things that are going on in the floor, yeah. and it's being able to actually hold these both and weigh them and look. Good God, you know, there's, there's, um, this is, yeah. on the one hand, extremely, um, right. sort of just a, a shallow pleasure and on the other hand yeah. or, or on the one hand it's a floor and on the other hand it's a you know it's actually g yeah. looks for all the world like it could well be a mountain range you know yeah. Yeah. and that, that's a, that if that's not a source of giggling um, a reason for giggling that's I don't know what is you know could it be that through taking salvia the individual catches sight of the ambiguity of the world an ambiguity that is normally obscured and hidden from us orange ones I was so striped as a whole row of them. I went up the side of your arm and made that little chain that went up there and all those things were grey and red and grey and um, orange reflectors. 